A eukaryotic cell includes a plasma membrane around the cell, the nucleus that holds the DNA, and the cytoplasm, which holds the cytosol, or liquid gel part of the cell, and the organelles. We're going to take a closer look at some of those parts of the cell. Let's start with the nucleus. The function of the nucleus is to store and protect the DNA. Eukaryotic cells, cells that have a nucleus, have a much lower rate of DNA mutation than prokaryotic cells, and that's because the DNA is protected in the nucleus. The nucleus is where DNA is copied and where RNA is made before it goes out into the cell to make proteins. The membrane around the nucleus is the nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope has pores, or small openings, that allow proteins to get in to carry out the functions of replication and transcription and to let the RNA back out in order to make proteins. This dark area of the nucleus is the nucleolus. This area stores proteins and RNA needed to make ribosomes. Unless the cell is actively dividing, the DNA is in the form of chromatin, where all of the pieces of DNA are coiled up around proteins called histones and wrapped around each other so that the DNA, which is about two meters in length in a human, can fit into the nucleus of a single cell. Here you can see how the double-stranded DNA is wrapped around these gray histone proteins and then further coiled up and packaged until it can be small enough to fit into the nucleus. Complex organisms like humans have very large energy needs. We need a lot of ATP in order to run all of the various reactions and processes going on in our bodies. The mitochondria are essential to help us with that. The mitochondria help us harvest the energy from glucose and use that to make ATP. The structure of a mitochondrion is interesting because it has two membranes. The outer membrane surrounds the mitochondrion and sort of separates it from the rest of the cytosol. And then there's an inner membrane that has a lot of folds in it. Those folds help to increase the surface area. This is important because the actual process of producing the ATP happens right at this inner membrane. Cells that are very active and do a lot of work, like muscle cells, for example, have very high ATP needs, and those types of cells tend to have more mitochondria in them. Cells that are less active, something like a fat storage cell, don't need as much ATP, and they only have a few mitochondria. While the mitochondria are important for making the ATP, the ribosomes are essential for making proteins. The ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis. They are able to read the secret code of the RNA and join together the amino acids that are needed to make a protein. Ribosomes are made of rRNA and proteins. Some of them are found loose in the cytoplasm where they make proteins that are just used in the cells, and others are found connected to the endoplasmic reticulum where they make proteins that are likely to be secreted. If the ribosomes are the workers who are making the proteins, the endoplasmic reticulum is like the factory. This is where a lot of synthesis is happening. The endoplasmic reticulum is a series of membrane channels that connect all the way to the nuclear envelope. Some of these channels have ribosomes attached to them. This is called rough endoplasmic reticulum, or rough ER. This is the location of the synthesis of proteins that are going to be secreted from the cell. The ribosomes make the proteins, they go into the endoplasmic reticulum, and from there they'll be packaged and processed for release. Cells that carry out a lot of secretion, like the pancreas that makes a lot of digestive enzymes and hormones, have a lot of rough endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes attached is called smooth endoplasmic reticulum, or smooth ER. Smooth ER is the site of lipid synthesis. This is where we make the lipids that a cell needs. That includes fatty acids, cholesterol, hormones, and even phospholipids needed to make more membrane. Since liver cells are responsible for making a lot of the lipids that we need in our bodies, we find a lot of smooth endoplasmic reticulum in liver cells. The smooth endoplasmic reticulum is specialized for other functions in some cells. For example, in muscle cells, the smooth ER 
is modified into what's called the sarcoplasmic reticulum, and it stores the calcium that's needed to trigger muscle contraction. Lipids and proteins that are destined to be secreted from the cell go from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi. The Golgi complex is a series of membrane sacs sort of stacked on top of each other, and this serves as the warehouse. This is where lipids and proteins are sorted, tagged, and packaged before they're ready to be released. The lipids and proteins that are going to be secreted come from the ER in vesicles that then fuse with the Golgi complex to allow those proteins to be sorted through the various layers. Once that is accomplished, they're packaged into transport vesicles at the other side of the Golgi complex, and now they're ready to be released from the cell. Let's take a closer look at vesicles. Vesicles are little membrane sacs or membrane bubbles that bud off existing membranes in the cell. They can bud off the plasma membrane during endocytosis, or they can bud off the endoplasmic reticulum or off the Golgi complex. There are several different types of vesicles with different functions, but in general, vesicles are important for storing and transporting things. Secretory vesicles are vesicles that bud off the Golgi and are holding things that are going to be secreted to the outside of the cell. Endocytic vesicles are vesicles that form during endocytosis to bring something into the cell. Lysosomes are a special sort of vesicle that contain a lot of digestive enzymes. These are very powerful enzymes that can break down just about anything that a cell can bring in. So they have to be carefully contained within a lysosome to keep them from breaking down the parts of the cell itself. Peroxisomes are similar. They also contain a number of enzymes. But the enzymes contained in a peroxisome are specifically to help break down toxic substances. They can help our bodies take care of drugs, alcohol, hydrogen peroxide, which is a toxin to cells, free radicals, and other things. Cells that are responsible for removing these sorts of toxic wastes from the body, especially those in organs like the liver or the kidneys, have a lot of peroxisomes.